Are you ready? All right. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Savior's Lutheran Church. It's good to be with you this morning. In all we do in this place for worship and for ministry, you are welcome to it. All we do in worship today, from prayer to communion or in mission and ministry together, it's better because you are here. Whether it's in person this morning or watching on television, listening on the radio or watching on YouTube, it is better because you're here today. For ministry needs to which we can respond, you're encouraged to connect with one another this morning. You can use the little brown books. You can start those any minute now, like even right now, so you get to know each other in the pew this morning and, and grow your sense of, of community that way. And it's also a great way to connect with us so that we have some awareness of any ministry needs that you may have. Or you can email us here or call us on the, the old-fashioned telephone or Facebook us, or they're all great ways to connect. You can catch this service again and each week's worship on YouTube. Just uh, watch Facebook for the posting on that. Or just search Our Savior's Lutheran Church, Cloquet, Minnesota. And you can uh, catch those, those uh, services that you've missed this summer since you've been doing other things. <laughs> Anyway, today we are back on our journey through the book of Acts. The religious authorities, after arresting and harassing the apostles of Jesus, have let them go again, let them go on their way. As a community of disciples continues to grow, there's also a growing need for social services within that community, taking care of each other in an orderly and powerful way. Today we hear how that community tackles that challenge. But first, would you rise together as we join in song? Songs of worship led today by our Savior's praise team.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our, of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join with me in the prayer of the day. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, so that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Today's reading is Psalm 15. Please read responsively. The assembly's portion is in bold print. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. Word of God, word of life. The book of Acts has been telling us the story of how the early church is growing rapidly. Peter and the other apostles are beginning to live out Jesus' final instructions to go and make disciples, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. They're doing this. Lives are changed. Challenges from religious establishment have been met with power and with grace, even when those challenges have taken on physically abusive forms. The Holy Spirit's presence is plain to see in the lives of this growing, rapidly growing, growing community. Today's part of the story follows up on the second contentious encounter the apostles had with the religious Jewish leadership. They'd been warned not to mess with these guys by one of their own, and yet they had them beat before threatening them even more and telling them never, never, never preach or teach in the name of Jesus of Nazareth again. But that command will not be obeyed, as we shall see. So at chapter 6, the story picks up. Sometime later... As the number of disciples kept growing, there was a quarrel between the Greek-speaking Jews and the native Jews. Now, the Greek-speaking Jews claimed that their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of funds. So the twelve apostles called the whole group of believers together and said, It is not right for us to neglect the preaching of God's word in order to handle finances. So then, friends, choose seven men among you who are known to be full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, and we will put them in charge of this matter. We ourselves then will give our full time to prayer and the work of preaching. The whole group was pleased with the apostles' apostles proposal, so they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, Nicholas, a Gentile from Antioch who's earlier been converted to Judaism. The group presented them to the apostles who prayed for them, placed their hands on them. And so the word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem grew larger and larger, and even a great number of priests accepted the faith. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. It's one of the awesome things, brothers and sisters in Christ, to me, in hearing, reading this story, just how central and how important it was in, in the life of this early church for them to take care of each other. That this was such a holy and godly thing in their experience. It was so important. They had to take care of each other. The Holy Spirit moving in their midst did more than, than physical miracles and healings and, drew, and drawing people in. It drew people in, but it also made sure that the community was there for them taking care of them, feeding them, taking care of the the day-to-day stuff that people need when they gather together. We've been studying the book of Acts on Wednesday mornings, too. The Wednesday morning Bible study is a complement to this preaching series. We're a few chapters behind. Unfortunately, that group has a tendency of getting off track from time to time. It's a good thing, but we're a little bit behind. So this last week, we're back in chapter 4. And where we ran into some of those previous descriptions of how the community was taking care of each other and how people would sell their stuff in order to make sure that the community was fed. 
It's an, it's an amazing thought. People would sell their stuff. There's already 5,000 folks and more being added every day that are being cared for. And the system apparently was getting a little haphazard. But it was, from the very beginning of things, a matter of faith. This taking care was a holy thing. Now, doing it isn't without its challenges. We heard in today's verses, one of those challenges is the community grows. There's people... You know, people of different ethnic backgrounds. There's, to, to understand what's going on here a little bit, you've got your standard Jewish people. You know, the people that were born and raised in what was then the country of Israel. Still, the, today's modern Israel is very similar geographic to, to what was going on then. But these were sort of the, the racially peop, Jewish people. They could trace their lineage back to, back to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and then the rest of the 12 tribes. They, they knew who their great, 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 great grandparent was and how they were related to Abraham. But there were other people who were being drawn to, to Judaism. Even before Jesus, the, the Holy Spirit was drawing them to follow Jesus, there was, this, there was this, they were doing what God had intended Abraham's people to do forever to, to, so that this people would be a blessing to the nation, so that people would be drawn to the faith, would be drawn to, to follow God. And so there's people from all over the known world who had converted, who weren't racially Jewish people, who didn't, couldn't trace their, their, their lineage back to the, one of the 12 tribes. And most of those were people who spoke the Greek language as opposed to the ancient Hebrew. Now, the, the thing of the, th of, the, uh, of the time, Greek was sort of like the English of the day. If you wanted to learn anything, it was written down in Greek. If you wanted to converse to do business, it was usually in Greek. Latin was on its way in because the Roman Empire had taken over things, but the, but the Greek culture, the Greek language was still the kind of one of the most powerful essences that was, that was at work in the world. So people that weren't from Israel, pe people who were, who were Jewish by conversion, or maybe they were people that had married into the faith from other, these other lands, they were, they were Greek speakers. And for some reason... Those Greeks who had gathered in Jerusalem and were beginning to follow Jesus found that their widows, the Greek-speaking widows, weren't getting fed. Now, I find this astounding. Because the whole, how, in the, in the face of this, how powerful the Holy Spirit was in the work of that early church, shaping that community and, and getting things going and, and, you know, releasing the apostles from prison, that whole bit. There's these miracles going on. How, and it sounds as if it was the apostles themselves who were in charge of this distribution. How could they miss the Greek-speaking widows? Was there some, I mean, how would they miss that? It's not for a while yet that this whole thing gets called Christians, but as these people are joining in this thing, as it's described in chapter 4, the growing diversity created these friction points. The Greek speakers were getting left out. How was there this blind spot, even in the face of such a powerful revelation of the Holy Spirit? Could it be the beginnings? It is. It is. From here on, more and more God's people begin to struggle with that power of the Holy Spirit. As we read further into the book of Acts, human sin and human pride start to push out even that powerful Holy Spirit that was at work then. And this is, this is just the first inclination of the problem that's coming. It seems as if the reminder of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus is that you take care of each other, every one of each other. That taking care is a holy thing. It seems that reminder seems to need to be repeated to the church of every generation. Kind of wonder what it was like back in the old days when the Germans and the Scandinavians were first getting together in this country. I mean, how do you mix lutefisk and sauerkraut? Now, what happened here in this congregation is that Ludafisk won. So those of us who crave sauerkraut, it's like, what about us? And it was 
a little more, a little more strained in the, the early days of the church. Today, the ELCA as a whole, in, in our church, we are trying to be intentional about being inclusive to the next wave of believers for whom sauerkraut and, and lutefisk and even hot dishes are like, what? Where's my tortilla? The ELCA as a whole is trying to be, trying to be, sensitive and welcoming to those whose customs and language are different than we're used to. And the ELCA's ministries to those in need from the World Hunger Appeal to Lutheran World Relief to Lutheran Social Services and everything in between are some of the very best in the world, regardless of what country we're working in, to make sure that we are meeting the needs as they arise, no matter who you are, no matter what, no matter what your background is. We are good at this. Our church is good at this. For the early church, there was an underlying awareness that Jesus had reached out to Greeks, Romans, Samaritans even. He, he, in his ministry, and his disciples knew this. They'd watched this happen. They'd been with him when he talked to women and invited. I mean, they were there when they saw him do this. But it was apparently way too easy to miss. That's, there were people being, being neglected in his new community. It was almost as if they had to have a little declaration on the part of the Greek folks. They're like, remember Greek widows. The spirit-led response then was to set aside some folks for that job. And if you look at the list of names, they're pretty Greek. The spirit-led response was to set these people aside, was to make sure that everyone, everyone was treated fairly and was cared for. Every one of those names is a Greek name. The team that was set aside were chosen because they were men who everyone trusts, who were full of the Holy Spirit and full of good sense. The way the message version reads it, sometimes these seven are referred to as the very first deacons of the church. And because they responded, because they let, the, they let the Holy Spirit guide them, the community of faith continued to grow. That reminder that what it means to be a growing community of disciples of Jesus is that we take care of each other, that taking care is a holy thing. That reminder seems to, be, to need to be repeated in each community of faith again and again. I mean, this is just a, a few weeks into the deal here. And even... Even the apostles needed to be reminded. Now let me tell you, the ministry staff here at Our Saviors tries to lead in such a way so that we remember that truth here. Beyond our participation in the ministries of the ELCA, which have suffered a little in recent years, we are constantly trying to heed the urging of the Holy Spirit and to keep our focus on taking care of each other. But just like then, your leaders, paid or volunteer, cannot do it all. Granted, here at Our Saviors, we're not talking about 5,000 people with hundreds being added every day. But on the other hand, you don't have 12 preachers at you either. They do say, this church growth people, that you should staff to grow. Just saying, it'd be nice to have some help. We do have deacons. What we ask them to do is to pray for you. And we ask them to pray for the people that you know need our help. We study and share ideas every week about the main lesson that's going to be on the docket for the coming Sunday. They are, those deacons are available to help serve communion on Sundays. You maybe wondered where these people came from who serve communion. These are people or deacons or people that have been deacons in the past. We try to invite three new deacons to start every year into a three-year service rotation. Now, this year, it's been an, an odd little struggle. Last year, we didn't have any trouble at all finding deacons. This year, it's been a struggle to identify those three new deacons for our community. So if the Holy Spirit is leading you to the, that kind of holy thing, God will bless you. Seriously, we need some deacons. So if the Holy Spirit is leading you into this ministry, let me know. This kind of taking care is a holy thing, and because it's a holy thing, God's Spirit is involved. So if you think, well, I don't know if I can handle that, well, maybe. But the Holy Spirit will handle you. The Holy Spirit will empower you to be a part of that, if that's where you're feeling led. 
Now, you may be wondering, oh, well, how does that really work? Well, take a look at this morning when, you, when you're served communion. There's be, there'll be some people that these are deacons, or they have been. You can talk to them about how God has been moving in their lives to assure that our deacon ministry gets done. Just talk to them. And maybe they can point out to you some other deacons that you can, you can chat with and, and God can work in your life toward that. Now, what, our, what we ask our deacons to do isn't exactly the kind of deacon work that Stephen and the rest of the others were doing in the book of Acts. We do have other ministry teams that help manage some of those same kinds of taking care, and most of those teams could also use a few more volunteers. They are some of the ways that we take care of each other. But many of you have shared your awareness that we need to do a better job. We have had a prayerful conversation for a couple of years now about what God is calling us to do. It's kind of a mission planning process. What does God want us to do into the future? Many of you have responded that you thought there was more we could do to take care of each other, both within this congregation and out in the neighborhood. Your church leadership is trying to listen to you and to the Holy Spirit and to discern how that can take shape for the future, how we can grow in taking care of each other. This God's work, our hands thing that's coming up is that the encouragement that we're doing, that is one way that that's happening already. The sign-up sheets are out there in the entryway by the, by the yellow T-shirt. The, I'm confident that we'll be able to rise up to that, to that need and, and to that challenge in our community. You know, the awesome response that we saw to the, to the challenge appeal, that's, that really has encouraged me this year out of your pockets and I don't know what, what other nooks and crannies in your wallets, you all responded in an amazing way to make sure that the funding we need to do ministry here is in place for the coming year. Thank you for that. And that was just money. I am certain that the same kind of energy that went into that great response is, is, is bubbling in your blood to help out with God's work, our hands, and the other that as a community, we can respond to the needs around us. God's work, our hands, is just a great way to focus that. And I think that's the next big thing for us for this year. And we're not asking you for money there unless you want to buy the T-shirt. That's only 8 bucks, and it would be kind of cool if you had one. But what we're really asking for is your passion and your time and, and your energy. On September 18th, we're going to join with our brothers and sisters in faith from Zion and from Queen of Peace to make a difference in this town. There will be projects that will help individuals. There will be projects that will help the community as as a whole. And there will be some group projects that will start here and bring taking care deeper into the world. Taking care is a holy thing. It's a God thing. Making sure that the needs of our community, the needs of the world are met. Many of today's miracles of healing and comfort and hope happen just like they did in the book of Acts this morning at the Spirit-filled hands of believers. We still can do this in the power of God's Spirit. It is a way for God to be glorified in our lives, as we're about to sing. So would you stand with me for our song of the day, Take My Life, That I May Be Glorified in Thee.
Holy Spirit makes it possible for us to confess and claim our faith, I invite you into the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let's do that together today. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take some time, share that peace. As we gather this morning's offering, thank you for your prayerful, financial, volunteer support. As I've hopefully made clear today, we can't do this without you. Let him give. Come on, Bill. Jeez. <laughs> thank you so much for your, for your prayerful support. number of things going on in the life and times of the congregation that I hope you're aware of. As mentioned in the, me in the message this morning, please stop by at the gold t-shirt and sign up to work with God's work, our hands. We got a pretty good start on the number of those feet, and not the number of folks that are signed up for it. Not that it's a competition, but we're, all, we're you know, you may have heard as we've talked about this before that even Queen of Peace, who was a Catholic church involved in this Lutheran ministry, outnumbered us last year. I'm just saying... You know, I know you have the energy to help out with this. So, yeah, sign up for that. That's coming up September 18th. Um, that's all I got. <laughs> Just a reminder that you believe that in, with, and under the bread and wine of Holy Communion, we truly experience the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are welcome. You are encouraged. You are invited to partake in the meal this morning. If you need gluten-free wafers, those will be served over at the left-hand station. If you need grape juice, that's in the inner ring of each wine tray. We will offer you the blood of Christ and offer that you to take that um, as, as you choose, either the wine or the grape juice. It does help to give those glasses a little, a little twist and wiggle to get them out. But it doesn't matter if you're a member here or if you're not even Lutheran. If Jesus is here, you are welcome at this table. We have grapes for the youngest members among us as well as a reminder for those folks that God loves us and God's grace is in our midst. Would you rise with me as we bless your offering? God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hands in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Rooted in Christ and rising to serve, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. 
We thank you, Lord, that you do send your Holy Spirit so that your people can take care of your people. Some weeks it seems like there's too many to care for, that some are being neglected. But we praise you that you always show us a way to respond, that your Spirit always supplies, guides, and empowers us to this holy work, including as we respond to the people of France and to the people of Turkey, and in other ways and in other places, all who face calamity of any sort. Remind us that your love, your love is always, always, always more powerful than any hate or any darkness. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit so that the physical and mental and spiritual and health healing needs of all your people are met. Be with any who need that healing today, especially those whom we name before you in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit to help us take care of mission and ministry. Grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes down from heaven, that your word may not be bound but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name we may abide to the end. Direct the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America by your wisdom as this church prepares to gather in assembly. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Whatever else you see, Lord, that we need, whatever we have left unspoken, whatever we perhaps forget or we think you don't care about or we think is too unimportant or we just wonder or doubt if, if it matters to you, help us turn everything over to you as you teach us again to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to hear and remember the words of our Lord Jesus, who gave us this holy supper, hear us, O Lord. In response to the call of God, the command of Jesus Christ, and the bond of our common faith, we come to the table. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. In response to the love of our Creator and remembering the death and resurrection of Jesus, our Savior, we come to the table. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. In the grapes, we have a reminder of God's love and forgiveness for the youngest of our assembly, a reminder of the same story, a reminder of the same truth, the same love and grace of God. Following our Lord's command and responding to our need for forgiveness, we come. Please be seated. Just a moment, the ushers will invite you forward. We'll begin on the outer wings and come down the center aisle. If you want to stay and pray after you've received the elements, you are certainly welcome to do so. If you want to remember your baptism as you come for communion, you are certainly encouraged to do that as well.
Rise with me as we together receive God's blessings. May the blessing, the reality, the truth of God's spirit, his food, his body, his blood strengthen us and keep us to serve one another with this gift with which he has given us this day. Please pray with me. O God, as a mother comforts her child, so you comfort your people, carrying us in your arms and satisfying us with this food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Send us now as your disciples, announcing peace and proclaiming that the reign of God has come near through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. O God of tender compassion, as you healed the sick and welcomed the stranger, Bless those who leave this assembly to share the gifts of this table with our sisters and brothers who could not be with us today. May they be sustained by the love and prayers of this community and by the bread of life that satisfies all hunger. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. With, be, may the Lord's face shine upon us with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace.